Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head down to Slovenia once again and we're going to have a look at another beer from a brewery you've seen me review a good number of things from over the last couple of weeks. So for this review then, we are going down to the Savinia Valley, which is about halfway between the capital Ljubljana in the centre of the country and Maribor, the second city up in the northeast. And we're going to have a look at yet another beer from Green Gold Brewing. This one is called the Povodny Mosh. It's a 5.8% West Coast IPA and uh, hopefully this one turns out to be very nice. This is one of the beers that these guys do that is actually more American hopped than Slovenian hopped actually. So this one I think will be a little bit different and a little bit interesting. So uh, yeah, hopefully it's a nice beer and I hope that you guys enjoy this one as well. It's definitely been a bit of a treat to have a look at some more of these Green Gold Brewing beers for you. A huge thank you of course to Luca Reinick, the owner of Green Gold Brewing, who very kindly sent me a box of 24 cans of beer to get through the lockdown with. That was awesome. I was able to share some of them and everything and of course we've been doing some review videos as well but hopefully this is another good IPA. Uh, this is the fourth IPA from the box of course you're, you're still going to see the Dragon Slayer later but we've reviewed the Albi Kazbak, the Comet As You Are and the Rocket Queen all of which were very very nice actually so very curious to see how this one turns out. The next review that you'll see after this one will be the Forbidden Fruit which is the Mango Wheat Beer so we'll need to see how we get on with that one as well. So uh, yeah, let's see how we go with this beer and I hope that you guys are enjoying another Slovenian beer review. Massive shout out to my good friend Davor Shiritz of course who facilitated a lot of this kind of stuff with the, uh, the Slovenian beer reviews here on the channel. So um, yeah, as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Green Gold Brewing before. No doubt you will see some more at some point in the near future. There's all the usual social media down there as well. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, or whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Slovenian beers that I've reviewed for you. That's being added to whenever I get the opportunity. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Green Gold Brewing then, on to my brewery notes. So Green Gold Brewing, as I've mentioned to you already, is owned by Luca Roynik, whose family have been growing hops for generations on the family farm in the Savinia Valley. So this farm has 41 acres of land and apparently it's one of the largest single hop farms in Europe and it can be found to the west of Selje and it's part of a town that's called September Visavinsky Dolini, if I've pronounced that correctly. I'm not well versed in Slovenian at all actually. Um, but the family farm started around 120 years ago and it's produced various different Slovenian hop varieties such as the Aurora, the Bobek, the Salaya, the Styrian Goldings, the Styrian Dragon, the Styrian Fox and of course the Styrian Wolf as well which was one of my first encounters with the high alpha acid Slovenian hops. So these guys started brewing their own beers back in 2016 and they had their premiere at Sir William's pub in Ljubljana and it's gone very very well for them since. They started off with a, fall, a small 500 litre brewery and they've scaled up considerably since then and they installed a canning line in 2018 and these days they're producing around 2,700 hectolitres of beer per year and they have around 20 different beers in total so far and that is only going to expand further I imagine. So um, yeah mainly it's IPAs that they brew. There are um, you know there are uh, there's a lager in there that you've seen me you already the hop princess and um, there is a wheat beer that you're going to see me review the forbidden fruit and of course they've got the oil wars imperial style as well i think there are a few other things that they, they do as well if memory serves me correctly that are different styles but because this is a, a brewery located on a hop farm it's not surprising that most of their beers are kind of a uh, hop orientated and of course this is a brewery that's very unique in the sense i've never heard of another brewery coming out of a hop farm i know that there's a, a hop farm here in, uh, in Scone in the very south, Corn Gardens, and they do have a very, very small brewery on site actually, so that's maybe one to keep an eye out for in the future. But yeah, these guys are probably the biggest brewery around at the moment that have a, a, their own hop farm, which is pretty impressive. So if you want to try some of the, the interesting Slovenian hops like the, the, the Wolf, the Fox, and uh, the dragon and things like that, you know, you uh, you will be in 
for uh, a little bit of a treat if you try some of these Green Gold Brewing beers. So, um, yeah, that's all I can really tell you about Green Gold Brewing for the moment. If you want to learn more, of course, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And, of course, you can check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all of the different beers that they've done. So, um, yeah, let's get on and have a taste of this beer then. So I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork again before we open this up. As you can see and as is typical for uh, Green Gold Brewing, it's got some really beautiful, beautiful artwork on it. I have to say that the artwork on this can is just, uh, I have to say, is just absolutely um, awesome. I really like that. But Pavodny Moj, this literally means the water man from what I gather, Pavodny Moj. Uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, I've probably got the enunciations and the stresses and stuff all wrong, but yeah, Pavodny Moj is the water man. So that's why you've got this kind of crazy Aquaman looking guy on it and the woman obviously uh, wanting some of his beer I think so um, or maybe a bit more who knows but yeah there you can see green gold uh, brewing symbol on this I do like the, the symbol that these guys have I like the fact that it's kind of hop uh, hop flower orientated but like I said to you at the start of the video this one is a 5.8% West Coast IPA the Slovenian hop in this one is the Aurora which is quite commonly used as a bittering hop and it also has a uh, Citra, Amarillo and Centennial from America in it. So this beer is actually one of the more unusual ones from um, Green Gold in that it has more American hops in it than, um, than Slovenian ones actually. And it's strange that because they've given it the most Slovenian name of uh, the ones that I've had so far. All the other ones have had English names, but then the beer that has American hops in it is the one that has the Slovenian name. I don't get that. I don't understand that. But um, yeah, it's interesting. That I wonder what the motivation behind calling it um, Waterman is as well, actually. But yeah, it should be a good beer anyway. Let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting. Gold top on this can, incidentally. So yeah, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. I'm very curious to see what this beer has in store for us. And I'll tell you straight away, you can smell some of that lovely Citra and Amarillo coming out of this one already. The Aurora, of course, will be being used as the bittering hop in this one. So it's got a Slovenian base hop to it, of course, but then everything else is uh, is American in this. So um, yeah, let's have a little look at this beer and see how we got on it. 5.8% ABV as well. I mean, um, it's one of the lower alcohol West Coast IPAs that you're going to come across actually. So um, yeah, but this one should be very, very good actually. So as you can see with this beer, it's poured a lovely kind of bright hazy yellow. It's almost the same colour as like a German Munich Helles or something like this. It's not quite as amber as you might find from some of the West Coast IPAs, but it definitely has the right level of haze to it. You know, you do expect just a little bit of haziness to these West Coast IPAs. You can see there's a solid half finger of a frothy um, ivory cream coloured head on this one, one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones going up towards the bottom of that head there, but you know overall it does look very very nice actually, I like how this, uh, I like how all of this goes together, it is, uh, you know, it looks very nice, but as I say more yellow than amber, uh, which is a bit of a surprising thing, I guess they maybe wouldn't have used caramel in this, uh, maybe the sweetness is coming from biscuit malt or something else, because usually it's the American Touros or the Caramalts that gives it that nice kind of deep amber colour. But as long as it's a good beer, who really cares about the colour? And I can tell you the aroma of this one is going to be very nice. I'm getting a lot of nice esters coming off this already. But yeah, nothing overly surprising about this one when you consider what style of beer it is. As I say, um, one of the lighter more golden leaning West Coast IPAs that I've come across, certainly. So let's have a look at the aroma then and just see how we get on. Yeah, that's nice. It's pretty old school as well, actually, I have to say. Um, so yeah, straight away with this one, you can smell a nice kind of bready base to it. And um, there's a little bit of biscuity sweetness in there. It does have a wee, a wee hint of caramel to it, but mainly it's a sort of McVitie's digestive biscuity sort of thing. Um, but yeah, the malt base is, is kind of pretty straight up in this one. There's maybe one or two little woody undertones in there, of course. But um, yeah, I mean, it is, it is pretty kind of straight up. It's a very direct, straight shooting beer, this, in terms of its aroma. But yeah, some nice bready notes. Uh, white bread, a little bit of kind of more brown bread crusty quality as well, a few kind of grainy notes, you know, uh, McVitie's digestive biscuity qualities, a little bit of a sweeter caramel in the centre. But yeah, the hoppy notes out of this one are definitely where the focus should be. So you can smell a little bit of that light kind of noble 
almost earthiness and things that you get. Um, I think you know, I think with the the lower alpha acid hops and things like that, they do have a little bit more of a um, they do have a little bit of that noble quality to them. The Right guys, sorry, the camera just decided it had no memory left as it does randomly sometimes. But yeah, we were talking about the, the, the hoppy qualities and the aroma here. So as I was saying, you know, the Aurora has some of those really nice kind of German noble type qualities to it. The lighter grass and it's just a little bit of floral note and a wee touch of earthiness. And you get all of that out of this beer actually. So it's really nice actually, the, the, the sort of... Um, kind of more bitter base that the beer has. But on top of that, of course, you get a lot of nice juicy, fruity characters out of the American hops as well. I mean, with this one, you do get a nice little bit of the lemony zest from the Centennial. You get some of the oily oranges from the um, from the Amarillo as well. The Citra for me, um, you do get a wee bit of the mango, but I find the Centennial and the Amarillo a little bit more obvious in this one, to be honest. Um, I mean, as I say, there is a wee bit of a mango kind of note in this one you get almost a little touch of a kind of gooseberry-ish lychee type note out of it as well which is some of the kind of uh, complexities you can get from citra but mainly for me it's the oranges from the amarillo and some of the kind of lemony zesty notes from the centennial that are coming out in this one and um, of course you've got a big kind of floral spicy character to it as well which will be from the american hops if i remember right amarillo's about 10 or 11 percent alpha acid the citra is about 13 or 14 and centennials around that kind of 12 13 kind of mark as well so it's there's a lot of alpha acid from these um late what i'm guessing will be the late edition hops um in this case so that i suspect that the aurora will be being used as the uh, the bittering hop and being added on earlier on in the boil to give you the bitterness and then the other hops will be added a little bit later to give you a little bit of bitterness but also the kind of aroma and uh, flavours and things like this too. So um, yeah, this one I think should be very, very nice, very inviting aroma. It does have a little bit of the oily fruitiness to it as well and it's got kind of everything that you would expect from the West Coast IPA but it doesn't quite smell as dank as you're going to get from some of the other ones. This is quite a nice oily, fruity kind of... Um, IPA in my mind. So uh, yeah, take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of this one before you get stuck in, but we are going to have a taste of this now and see how we get on. This one is the Pavodny Moj, the Waterman, a 5.8% West Coast IPA with Aurora, Citra, Amarillo and Centennial from Green Gold Brewing uh, near Celia in the Savigny Valley in Slovenia. Once again, huge thank you to Luca Roenick for making this review possible and I hope that you guys are enjoying this. Big shout out to Davor. Slanja, Skol, Nazdravia. Yeah, that's really pretty damn nice actually. Um, you know, for being 5.8% and thus a wee bit lower on the alcohol scale, it really doesn't lack the flavour actually. I think this one is really, again, it's very, very nicely done. Compared to the other beers that I've had from uh, Green Gold in this lot of things, this one um, is not is not really farmhousey. The other ones had a little bit of a kind of farmhousey type vibe about them. This one is pretty much more kind of straight up. Even the other West Coast IPA had a little bit of that kind of farmhousey vibe to it, which was interesting. So um, yeah, I like this one. This gets a big thumbs up for me, and I will say you do get a good bit of that higher bitterness on the uh, the sides of the palate with this one later on. So I like what they're doing with this. This one could actually be my favourite of the IPAs that I've had from them so far. I really, I really do like this one. So thumbs up to uh, to Green Gold Brewing um, for this one. For lower, for being lower in alcohol as well. I think this one's actually the other one. I think that I had was like six point eight, six point nine percent. I forget if that was the um, the Rocket Queen or whether it was the uh, Comet As You Are. Um, I forget which one exactly it was, but. Um, you know, this one is, is really pretty nice actually. So big thumbs up to Green Gold Brew for this. Let's try and break down the flavour a little bit more. So yeah, um, straight away with this beer then you get that nice kind of pale malty quality. That just blankets the middle of your tongue. On top of that you start to get some nice, uh, you do start to get a nice little bit of a kind of um, Biscuit, you know, you do get a little bit of a sweet caramel in the very centre of your tongue, but as you move out from the centre of your palate, you start to get a little bit more of that kind of biscuity um, type quality to the beer, which again, 
spray scent is really quite nice but the malt base in this is very kind of straight up it's very much a, a pale malt bottom layer a little bit of a sweet kind of caramelly note in the middle of it then you've got some kind of biscuity qualities just kind of pushing out from the um from the from the side of that as well so this is quite a nice uh, beer this one there is a wee bit of a grainy quality towards the back of the palate too there which is um, which is quite nice, but this is very straight up in its malt base, but it really does the, you know, it really ticks all the boxes of what you want from this style actually, so yeah, nothing wrong with that. So yeah, in terms of the hoppy side of things then, again this is quite nice. If you go to the back corners of the palette you can get the little bits of earthiness that you'd expect from the Aurora, and you get a wee bit of that nice, kind of slightly woody, um, floral quality there just as you push further forward but as you reach the kind of front parts of the palette you do get that bigger kind of spicy um, floral aromatic resin which I'm guessing is coming some of the it's almost a little bit piney and resinous as well which is coming from the you know the American hops at the start of this one I like how that all goes together around the front curve of the tongue it's just that little bit lighter and grassy which I think is um, it's just that little bit lighter and grassy, which I think is, is quite nice. They've got a really good balance here between the hops. It's lighter at the back of the the, pa the back corners of the palate, a bit lighter towards the front, and then nice, big and spicy on the sides, actually. The way that that balances out is really very nice. But yeah, I like how this... Um, I do like how this uh, all goes together. Behind the front curve of the palate, of course, that's where you get that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer. And um, again, this one's got some really nice stuff there. If you the, the, the citra is a lot more obvious in the flavour than it is in the aroma in my mind. So if you go towards the back of that oily bubble at the, the front third of your tongue, you do get a little bit of a darker grapefruit there as you push further forward from that. It's maybe got a few sort of passion fruity elements, but again, this is the, the magic of the citra. The citra is a bit of a jack of all trades when it comes to the fruits. There's lots of things going on with it. But then it becomes quite distinctly mango. Then as you reach the kind of front part of your tongue, and um, just behind the front curve, it's more of an amarillo -y orange. And then around the kind of front edge of the palate, it's a little bit of a kind of lemony. That's when you get the kind of lemony zesty notes from the Centennial, actually. So that's really quite nice, I have to say. Um, I like how all of this goes together. Yeah, for me, this one is really... Um, this one really kind of hits the spot actually. I think this could well be my favourite one that I've had out of the IPAs so far. Like I said, and it's not anything against any of the other ones, but this one just really sort of hits the spot for me. As I've told you before, I'm a bit of a sucker for a kind of uh, lovely big dank West Coast IPA, and this one I think is really quite nicely done. Um, it doesn't obviously it doesn't quite have the same level of sweetness as you might get from. Uh, the likes of the Torpedo or some of the other West Coast IPAs, but the malt base, that slightly breadier and sweeter malt base, I think, is uh, is really nice in this one. So it's a big thumbs up from me. This it's one that doesn't really do anything surprising with the style, but I think it's just a really, really well done beer. It's properly old school as well with the you know the Centennial, the uh, Citra and the Amarillo. Those are three pretty old school hops actually, but it does its job very, very well. This one, the the Pavodny Mange. Yeah, I like it. Um, in terms of the mouthfeel then, I'd say this is a mid-bodied beer. Um, yep, mid-bodied, carbonation's very smooth, leans towards the oily side of things in its mouthfeel. The hoppy bitterness, I think, has to be about 70. I think it's sitting around the, the 70 IBU mark, this one. Could be a little bit higher than that, right enough. Um, but yeah, I think about 70-ish IBUs with this beer. Um, it does, and that kind of rings out into the aftertaste actually, you do get quite a bit of that bitterness there. So yeah, about 70 IBUs. The malt base, like I say, quite a bit of smoothness, nice little bit of sweetness. It gets a little bit more oily the further that you go into uh, the aftertaste with it as well. And you've got some nice juicy and slightly oily fruits coming out of this beer as well. But overall, it is really quite nice how it goes together, this one. And uh, I'm glad that I was able to review this beer. I think this one might be my favourite of the IPAs that I've tried from uh, from Green Gold so far. This one just really ticks quite a few of the boxes for me. I've told you before, I love a good West Coast IPA, especially if it's got a little bit of that orange in it and a little bit of an oily 
uh, kind of quality, then it's going to go down a treat with me, and this one certainly has. So um, yeah, this is I, th I think it's fair to say this is probably this probably is my favourite one that I've had from them so far. So if you want something a little bit more hazy, I would say go for the cashmere. Um, but then if you want something a little bit more dank and hoppy and things, then go for this one. I really. Uh, I've really enjoyed this one actually. So um, yeah, this is this is nice. So um, yeah, awesome actually. Really enjoyed this one. So try this beer for yourself and just see what you think. And you know, check out some of the other Green Gold Brewing beers as well. The Rocket Queen and the Comet As You Are are both very nice beers as well actually. So um, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. This one was the Pavodny Moj, the Waterman, a West Coast IPA at 5.8% from Green Gold Brewing. And uh, just outside of Celia in the Savigny Valley in Slovenia. Once again, a huge thank you to Luca Roynik for making this review possible, and I hope that you guys are enjoying seeing some more Slovenian beer reviews here on the channel. You will see a good, uh, you will see another two beers reviewed from uh, Green Gold Broom. We've still got the Forbidden Fruit and also the uh, Dragon Slayer to check out, actually. So you'll see those reviews coming up over the next couple of weeks or whatever. But yeah, awesome to try this one, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you again for watching, and I will catch you guys very soon. Slanju, Skull, cheers. Make sure you check out my social media, and make sure you check out Green Gold Brewing. This was an awesome, awesome beer. Cheers.